This is the primary school that I attended. I came here in September 1963. I arrived with my sister and my mother and father on the SS Patrice and we settled here in Brunswick. My father um, bought a house in North Carlton, just down the street from here and we uh, were signed up to attend Brunswick South Primary School. Most of the kids that came here were like me. They would have just arrived predominantly from Italy and Greece um, and we were fresh off the boat. I remember bringing my lunch to school uh, and it was very thick bread with uh, my mother used to put zucchini or um, eggplant slices on it and cheese and I remember uh, basically not wanting to eat it and on occasion would throw it away because the lunch that I and my other fellow students at the time brought to school did not look like the lunch that the Australian kids brought to school and their lunch was white sliced bread, literally, with either hundreds of thousands on it or Vegemite. I also remember where I was standing in the playground where I realised um, that I could speak English. I was around here. I, I don't know why. I've never been able to understand it, but I know that I remember it well. And all of our prep, the preppies and the grade ones used to play around here. And then At school we were being taught to become Australians via English. I was Māori at school, but then I'd go home and I would be Maria and I would speak Greek because my parents didn't speak English. We were able to move in and out of those double lives. I would say that we pretty much looked after ourselves. We were the interpreters, I was the neighbourhood translator. We did all those things at a very, very young age. I would take my neighbour to the hospital when she was pregnant and she contracted German measles. I was 13 at the time. The doctor says you need to tell her that she has German measles, she may need to abort the child. And that's a pretty distressing thing for a 13 year old to have to try and explain to the neighbour. So we were constantly called to do adult things and we then began to make decisions. I did a, a, a piece of art, a big Hessian thing where we sewed stuff on. I've still got it at home. We did it here. Um, so this was the art room. I guess I have been shaped largely by my mother's grief. Her grief, her personal grief of being, of coming to Australia. And then she died of breast cancer. Um, the first person we knew of. I lost my mother when um, I was 25. Her biggest grief while she lived in Australia was that she had been separated from her mother. She and her generation came here to the other end of the world and they couldn't go back, Lella. Today we come and go. In those days, they couldn't go back. Politics was a big thing at home and of course Gough Whitlam's um, arrival made Migrant Australia, switched Migrant Australia on politically in a way that had never happened before. There are moments in history when the whole fate and future of nations can be decided by a single decision. Everybody was abuzz with his new Prime Minister who was going to develop the, the migrant policies, pensions, rights, everything was happening. It was a fascinating time. I was given the opportunity to go and work for Gordon Bryant, who was the member for Wills, on his campaign. Um, I didn't join the Labor Party until 1982. I don't think I ever had in my head that I would be a member of Parliament. It eventually came as part of my engagement with the Labor Party. In the 60s and even in the 70s, at night, I would be terrified of the sea. I would just have this image of fear. It certainly was a great source of grief for my mother because it compounded for her coming to this strange country where she didn't feel that she could protect her children totally. The dislocation from your homeland, from your home, from your country, they're very powerful emotions. Every migrant would have had a syndrome called the dream of return because a lot came here and so we're going to make some money and get out of here. An overwhelming majority of them 
stayed in Australia, always believing that they would go back. Today I believe that they have finally been anchored by their grandchildren. <laughs>